Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to another exciting episode of the I Beat Ramadan series. And my name is Omala Bakiraji. And joining me is... Abdurrahman Idris. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. How's it been? Alhamdulillah, I mean, uh, we thank Almighty Allah for, yes, you know, Ramadan. So how's it for you? Well, let me cast myself now, shall I? Okay, uh, if you know me, you know I'm always working around with a water bottle. Yes, and always. And I've tried to do that. Once or twice, if I remember, like, oh, you're fasting, you don't need this. <laughs> don't need and then that. I drop that. So that's what we'll be starting with, the recitation from the Holy Quran. And this is brought to you by Five Beams Petroleum in the honor of Al-Haji Fatai bin Sola. May Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him Al-Jannatul Firdaus. And after that, we're going to be having the lecture, continuing the lecture series from Omar Sulaiman. It is themed Jannah. So please Jannah. let's do our best to pay attention to this one, pick some learnings from it, hear yeah. the words, and let it also, you know, make an impact in your life. Right after that, we'll be having the Uma play, brought to you by the Uma app. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back after that. الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين كفروا سواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون ختم الله على قلوبهم وعلى سمعهم وعلى أبصارهم غشاوة وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ يخالئون الله والذين آمنوا وما يخدعون إلا وما يخدعون إلا أنفسهم وما يشعرون في قلوبهم مرض فزادهم الله مرضا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ In this season of Ramadan, let us embrace the spirit of compassion, forgiveness, generosity, and self-discipline. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadah as we strive to become better versions of ourselves. May our hearts be filled with mercy, our souls with kindness, and may our politeness take over our arrogance. Ramadan Mubarak to you all from Viva. Not everyone gets into Jannah at the same time. Not everyone occupies the same rank. And not everyone is called from the same gate. But everyone who eventually gets in is going to be pleased. 
And the believer is so driven to Jannah right now that he tries to get in as fast as possible and with the highest place possible. And SubhanAllah, that's what a Jannah mindset means. It means that every single minute in this world is an opportunity to proceed quickly and beautifully through the gate of eternity. People are going to be entering Jannah at different points, and you have some that will actually be entering Jannah while others are still being held accountable. The Prophet ﷺ said that there is a gate which is specific for those who are not even going to be called to account. May Allah make us amongst them, Allahumma Ameen. And he said, this is the right-hand gate of paradise. And he said, the rest of the people of paradise will enter with everyone else through the normal gates. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls time and place. So this doesn't all have to fit in a linear way when we're speaking about it. The Prophet ﷺ said that the poor and downtrodden, and they are the majority of the people of paradise, they get to go first. And if you think about first class and VIP in this life, who usually is always at the back of the line? And in a more dramatic way, those swaths of poor people that are turned away from the gates of rich nations. And now they're ahead of everybody else and everybody wants to be like them. But that's not absolute because Abu Bakr anhu, for example, was not a poor man and he's going to be ahead of us all. So the scholar said that if a person used their blessings right, then they still have a higher place even if the poor will get in faster and lighter because they have less burdens to worry about. So there's the pace that you get into Jannah and then there's the place that you occupy within it. Now remember, Jannah is for people with certain qualities. So the Prophet ﷺ said, the first people to enter Jannah are people who are Hamadun. They praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times, in good times and in bad times. So it's not about what you had or didn't have, it's about how you channeled all of that towards the pursuit of Allah's pleasure and paradise. So you ask yourself, are you praising Allah with your circumstances or not? Because that's gonna determine how praiseworthy your order of entrance and eventual station are into paradise. Now, what does the waiting area outside the gates of Jannah look like? The believers are near to its entrance, as the Prophet ﷺ said, and they're under this tree where two rivers are flowing. They drink from one of them and they bathe in the other. And this removes all of the impurities inside out and they come out full of radiance. And the Prophet ﷺ said that as you look at the gates of paradise, paradise has eight gates, whereas hellfire only has seven. And this is just another way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us how His mercy exceeds His wrath. The Prophet ﷺ said, you have the gate of salah, you have the gate of sadaqah, you have the gate of jihad, those who strove for the sake of Allah. And then he mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have the gate of fasting. And he said, it's called ar-rayyan, which means endless drinks. And he said that no one enters that gate of paradise except for the one who's distinguished by their fasting. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is hearing this and he says, Ya Rasulullah, is there anyone who gets to be called from all of these gates? And the Prophet Sallallahu said, yes, and I hope you will be one of them. And this isn't random because Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu actually used to excel in all of those things. So it's only right that he's called from all of those gates. Whereas most people are blessed if they have just one quality that they excel in, to which they hope to be called into paradise by. Now, of course, you have gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that open all of these gates, even if you don't have all of the qualities of those gates. So when the Prophet ﷺ said, for example, no one of you performs wudu perfectly and then says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh, except that all eight gates of paradise will be open for you and you can choose which one to enter from. But even that's not random, because to make that dua, you have to do a perfect wudu. And you wouldn't be careful and frequent with your wudu if you weren't careful and frequent with your salah. So the wisdom of wudu opening all the gates is that if a person carefully preserves their salah, they naturally preserve everything else. And the Prophet ﷺ said the same thing about the Day of Judgment, that if the prayer is good, everything else is going to be good. And the same thing is now true about your entrance into paradise. Now, Ali radiallahu anhu said, you'll notice that the gates of paradise are actually vertical, not horizontal. You have one above the other because the higher gates 
correspond to the higher levels. And for this Ummah, there's a special gate reserved for us, inshallah. The Prophet ﷺ said, the gate from which my Ummah will enter paradise is as wide as the distance covered by a rider in several years. And in some narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, like the distance between the cities of Mecca and Hajar. And in other places, he mentioned different cities, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's a wide gate, yet still, they're going to be squeezed until their shoulders are about to dislocate. And that's from the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And Rasulullah said, Jibreel السلام, came to me, he held my hand, and he showed me the gate through which my ummah is going to enter Jannah. And once again, you have Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He says, Ya Rasulullah, I wish I could have been with you to see that gate. And the Prophet وسلم, said, I'll give you something better. Don't worry, you're going to be the first one to enter through that gate with me. But the Prophet وسلم, said, for all of us, he said, you're the best ummah because you're the last ummah to come, yet you're the first ummah to enter into paradise. So Rasulullah is the first prophet to enter paradise, and we are the first ummah to enter Jannah together ta'ala. So as we stand in line with anticipation behind our Prophet وسلم, Qatada rahimahullah says, you can actually see through the gates of paradise directly into it. And Rasulullah walks up, and he said, he rings the bell. He said, I will be the first person to hold the chain of paradise and clatter it. Wala fakhr, and I'm not boasting. And the keeper of Jannah will answer the doorbell. And he'll say, man ant, who are you? And I will say, Muhammad. And he will say, welcome, O Prophet of Allah. I was ordered not to open this for anyone before you. So that's the Prophet Wasallam. Now for the rest of us, we have our keys. The key to paradise in the metaphorical sense is La ilaha illallah. But as the scholars say, the teeth of that key are our deeds. And that's what's going to determine our order and our station. And the Prophet ﷺ says in another narration by Salman anhu, that we also have passports. So think about it like when you go to another country, you have a passport. So when you get to Jannah, What's the passport? He says, Inna Allah Azza wa Jal yu'ti al-mu'mina jawazan ala sirat. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a passport on the sirat. And it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hadha al-kitabu min Allah al-Aziz al-Hakim. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. This is a passport from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this person and this person. Allow this person to enter paradise with all of its loftiness and with its fruits within reach. So you have your keys and you have your passport ready, inshaAllah ta'ala. And then Allah says, Hatta ida ja'uha wa futihat abwabuha. And then they come and its gates are slowly opened. Now Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, pay attention to the difference between how the people of paradise enter and how the inhabitants of hell enter. Allah says about the inhabitants of hell, Hatta ida ja'uha futihat abwabuha. As soon as they get to it, the gates are suddenly opened and they're thrown into hellfire. But when Allah speaks about the people of paradise, He says, Hatta ida ja'uha wa futihat abwabuha. They get to paradise and then the gates slowly open, revealing the beauty of Jannah, capturing you with every second of its reveal as you marvel at its beauty. And we enter into paradise, Zumara, as groups. Why? Because it wouldn't be a celebration otherwise. In this life, as believers, we do Hajj together. We break our fast together. We then celebrate Eid together. We pray in Jama'ah together. So here, every group is walking together with happiness and they're congratulating one another. Whereas the inhabitants of Hellfire are actually cursing each other as they're being thrown in. So we're together in groups lined up and the Prophet Wasallam and his companions and his family are at the front. And we all enter behind them just as we followed them in goodness in this life, inshallah. Now for now, if you want to rattle your gate and have the angels call you, the Prophet ﷺ said that verily there is an angel at a gate amongst the gates of paradise. And he's saying, Man Whoever is going to give a good loan today will be rewarded tomorrow. And then an angel from another gate calls out and says, Allahumma a'ati munfiqan khalafa, Allahumma a'ati mumsikan talafa. Oh Allah, give back more to the one who gives 
and give destruction to the one who withholds. And those angels are calling from the highest place of the gates of paradise to the one who gives because you responded to the one calling upon you from the lowest places in the streets and alleys of this earth. And think about how many times the gates of Sadaqah called out to Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu while he was alive in this life. So imagine how eager they are for him now in the next life. And ask yourself, how eager do you want them to be for you? Rattle your gate and try to get in line with the first batch. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah فَدَخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي وَدَخُلِي جَنَّتِي Anyone can count the seeds in an apple, but only one can count all the apples in a seed. Before the creations of the heaven and the universe, there was only one, Allah, Rabbil Alameen, Al Wahid, who made the sun and planted the stars like trees, Al Ahad, the unique one with no need of slumber or sleep. Al-Khaliq created you like Kun Fayakun from the womb to the tomb. Al-Raqib is always watching you. Al-Musawwar fashioned thee and gave you all your faculties. All praise be to Al-Hamid, to he that is perfect and complete. And glory be to Al-Maji, majestically honorable indeed. And why would he need money when he is Al-Ghani? Al-Razaq fulfills the needs of even the birds and the bees while Al-Wahhab bestows his bounties out of love and mercy and you can try and count all his blessings but he is Al-Azim cause Al-Malik is the only king with servants he doesn't need Al-Hay is alive and Al-Qayyum will never die Al-A'la beyond the skies and Al-Hakim the most wise no lies but why would they try to prescribe a summit a sun when my lord has 99 names and Jesus ain't one Al-Hakim is the judge a Sayyid master above waging war against Al-Aziz it's like spitting at the sun Allah is Al-Jameel and loves that which is Al-Jamal and why would you have fear when al wali is by your side the most gentle al rafiq has the firmness of al mateen musa spoke to al samir but couldn't see al basir al awwal was the first and al akhir is the last al alim knows the present and the future and the past al wasi' encompasses all and knows what benefits and harms al shafi heals the sick and al muhsin gives good to all al mubin guides to this deen 
making the truth clear and clean. El Mu'min can provide security in ways you've never seen. El Qadir does what he pleases and is capable of all things. And he who kneels before El Mutakabir can stand up to anything. Victory comes from a Nasir. So I give thanks to El Shakur. Put my trust in El Wakil. Say my love for El Wadud. Ya Ghafoor. Ya Ghafar. Forgive me for you are El Afu. At Tawab, we turn to you. Cause you are Al Qudus. Ya Salam. It is my dream to see you. Ya Kareem. Ya Fatah. Open the highest gates of Jannah for me. Ameen. Al Mujib. Here's my prayers even when I can't find the words to say them. And Al Qawi gives me the strength to live a life of dedication to a Shahid being a witness over this entire nation. Al Hafiz protect this ummah from all the fitna and temptation. Al Qarib is closer to ourselves than our blood in circulation. Al Latif shows us kindness, but most of mankind is ungrateful. Till Al Hasib takes account on the day that we'll be standing naked. Where are their gods? Al Jabbar will ask all of his creation, for he is Al Qahar, while the rest are simply imitations. Al Haq, the only true on the day that our souls will become awakened so repent before al warith inherits all that you've accumulated al halim is patient with us although we have disobeyed him good is from al tayyib and al muhaymin makes observations of prostrations to al zahir manifesting through his creations al akram made us muslim so let us show appreciation for he is al jawad as revealed in his revelations for those of contemplation, Al Kabir must be the greatest. Cause knowing Al Manan is the only key to our salvation. The proof is Al Rauf, but it's true that their hearts are blinded. And this is just a reminder for those who love to be reminded of the most beautiful names and attributes that you will ever see. Like the mercy of Al Rahman and the compassion of Al Rahim. Welcome back into still the I Beauty Ramadan series and we hope you enjoyed the segments you just watched and you also picked some learnings from it. Yeah. And now it is time for I Charade, where it's time for you to laugh a little, you know. <laughs> uh, this particular segment, I love to be the one watching because if you had participated, you know it's not as easy as it looks not, anyway. It's not. So after I Charade will be Shepherd's Cave brought to you by Lotus Bank. That said, we're going on a very short break when we return. I Beauty Ramadan series continues. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sparing our lives to witness yet another wonderful day in the glorious and holy month of Ramadan. I hope you're keeping up with your act of ibadah. I'm trying to keep up with mine. Alhamdulillah, mean. Yes, this is Aisha Raids. Uh, you know how we do on Aisha Raids. We go into the street, we check out our brothers and sisters in Islam. We give them some, you know, charading words and see how well they can act and how well they can guess them correctly. Yes, so I'm about to enter the street now. And guess what the word for today is? Ramadan. Yes, the holy month of Ramadan that we're in. Let's see how people will describe them. And let's see if they are not going to really describe them. Who knows? Don't forget that this is proudly brought to you by Rifles. Join me as we enter the street. Okay. 
So, uh, with me here are two lovely sisters. Are you guys biological sisters? Yeah. Same father, same mother? Yeah. Wow, okay. So, let's see if they have maybe a psychic connection. So, this is Aisha Reeds. Huh? I've told, what's your name, ma? M. Fatia. M. Raji Fatia. M. Raji Okay, she's M. Raji Fatia. Wow, what a wonderful name. And what's your name also? Raji Taiwo. Okay, Raji. Yours is no, there's no M in your name, have you? Okay, my name is M. Abdurrahman Idris. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, so I have told Sister Fatia a word now. Hmm? And she's going to act that word for you within one minute. You have one minute to guess it. She will not say the word out with her mouth. If she should say it, you are disqualified, though. You are both disqualified. No gift for you. Hmm? So, are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, bismillah. So we can act it now. <laughs> you say whatever is coming to your mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, M. try do it again. M. Still this M. <laughs> uh -huh. so if you do not eat, you cannot play, Abi. That's not food, but you have you have 30 seconds. No food again, Abi. <laughs> Manga strike. <laughs> no eating. Ramadan. Why do you think that's the word? Because of no eating. Nothing is going to chew your mouth. So you cannot eat anything. But you can fast in other days now. Why is it Ramadan? Why do you think it's Ramadan? Because of we used to fast during Ramadan. Mm -hmm. And Ramadan is the month mm. that we fast and Go in the absence of any. So when she does it like this, yes. she has the idea straight up. Yes. That's a very sharp one. Um, is it fasting now? Which is around the point, you can tell her that. Ramadan. Why do you think that's the answer? Um, because she's demonstrating that it's hungry and it's about What if she's having stomach aching? That he needs yeah, because he was demonstrating that eh? like as if he wants to eat something. Wants to eat. What, what if he's just hungry? Maybe he's, he's not belly full like some people say. <laughs> wow, that's 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 very really spot on. The answer is correct. Okay, salam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mm, wonderful response. I'm thinking we're gonna have some fun in this segment today. <laughs> my name is Abdul Rahman and what's your name? Okay, my name is Ramat. Okay. Sofiat. All right, Sister Rahma, Sister Sophia, this is Aisha Reid. I've told Sister Sophia a word now, okay. and I want her to demonstrate that word for you. I want to see if you can detect what that word is within a minute. Are you ready? Okay, yes. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> yes. Because that, okay, yes, it's like, <laughs> okay, let's see. Are you ready? Yes. So remember, you can't be audible. No audio, just description, all right? Okay, bismillah. Hmm. Foraka. Hmm. 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 Tesba. Hmm. Hey. Wonderful description. Mm hmm. What's coming to your mind? Just keep saying those answers. Who knows? You might just hit the nail on the head. Mm hmm. You have 30 seconds more. Fasting. Okay. I think you're around that point, but she needs you to be more precise. I'm giving you clues now. She needs you to be more precise. She needs you to be more precise. Tarawi. Hey. <laughs> Is the eye rolling for me like, really? Seriously? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. This is for you, Kotsi Rice Food. Kotsi Rice Food. Does that come like I to Rice Food? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And that brings us to the end of today's interesting, exciting segment of Aisha Rates. Today's word is Ramadan. Yes, we've got lots of funny, funny descriptions. And of course, some people's answer was up, straight up, right up, right on the point, hit the nail on the head within seconds. And we have sharp people in this community. Yes, don't forget that this segment is proudly brought to you by Right Foods, makers of Biggie drinks, fearless energy drinks, right hand Biggie sausages, and delicious salsa juice. My name still remains Abdurrahman Idris. Keep it locked. Masala.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Maimuna Ajesumobi and you're welcome to the very first episode of this season's Shepherd's Cave on the IBT Ramadan TV show, proudly sponsored by Lotus Bank. On here, we have small-scale entrepreneurs come pitch their businesses to well-seasoned, experienced business moguls who have proven track records of success in their careers. They'll pitch their businesses for opportunities to win investment funds to take their um, you know, their brand to the next level. We have had amazing seasons on this show. Last season was great and this year promises to be even better. We will go on a short break and when we come back, we'll give you a quick recap of last season's Shepherd's Cave. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. I am Jim Okudra at Ojoada Play, DQ Empire. I'm into catching event planner. I need your assistance in my business to promote it and get some equipment I need. Money is not easy to come by, do you know? So convince us. We want business to business and business to customer, business to business in terms of we and other fish farmers. So we do partner with them, we sell the tilapia fish to them. A lot of things have been said today. Consolidate on what you have now. So because of 5% disengagement, you're willing to invest in the physical space. Now you want to get a space. Where do you want to get that space to? And what are the potentials that you see there that has convinced you? Or for example, is near a school, so the students who come in and out will buy it. Or for example, is near the, a secretariat, where there's so many people who... So what is your target audience? Welcome back to Shepherd's Cave. This year, fearless entrepreneurs who have robust pitches for their businesses will jump in for a life-changing experience to access up to 30 million Naira. Yes, you heard me right. 30 million Naira investment funds for their businesses. This is going to take their brands or you know, their businesses to the next level entirely. It's going to be life-changing for the business owner and the business, of course. Our shepherds in the cave are ready to grill them to make sure that at the end of the day, we come out with only entrepreneurs who are deserving of each penny the investment fund has to offer. You do not want to miss any episode from the beginning to the end. Yes, tomorrow, inshallah, we will be introducing our shepherds and we'll set the ball rolling. It promises to be an interesting and promising ride. We'll be here with you, inshallah. See you next time on Shepherd's Cave on the IBT Ramadan TV show. My name is Maimuna Ajis Mobi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome back. I do hope you found that enlightening. We'll be moving on with iRiddles. On iRiddles, we, you know, hit the streets and uh, present some riddles. And after that, we are going to be having the Mortal Guinness Cocktail Lounge and Style Vision. You know, we end that particular segment with some viral videos that we're sure you're going to enjoy. And we'll be going on a quick break. Uh, make sure you stay tuned. We'll be back before you know it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's your favorite boy, Abdurrahman Idris, on the street again. And this is Viva I Riddles. Yes, proudly brought to you by Aspira, makers of Viva Plus detergent powder, Viva Plus gold detergent powder, Viva Plus laundry sanitizer detergent powder. Yes, today, I have my riddle for today already out here. So what are we expecting them to do? We expect them to spell, you know, just one word, to spell out just one word with this letters arranged here so i have some letters on the board here i want you to rearrange them to spell just one word can you do that just one word trio 
Ajay, what's Jay doing there? And E.T., okay. And E.T., what? And E.T., E. I has two E's, it's just one E here. Oh. Nothing is as it seems. Try to think beyond what is right there. The answer is actually there. You're trying to spell two words now. We want you to spell just one word. So just one word. Root state. No, right, it might, it might make sense. It might make sense. It might make sense. Come on, just. Uh huh. How, how were you able to figure this out? Like, this said is the answer. I should spell just one word. So I figured that just, this is J U S T, so just one word. That's wonderful. I take beer. Allah Akbar. Wow. I was thinking no one was actually going to get this. So you've broken the jinx. So, folks at home, there you have it. The answer is actually spelled just one word. So, the answer is actually there. So, you're walking away with the mother load of the gifts today. So, you have. Viva Plus, the multi purpose soap. You also have the Viva Plus Ankara. So you have your Viva Plus detergent powder. And for getting the right answer, you have Viva Plus gold detergent powder. So this is for you also. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does that come with La to Viva. Viva for the gift? We're giving this to you, Kotsi um, Aspira, makers of Viva Plus. Detergent powder. Thank you. Thank you to um, Aspira. Koti Aspira for this wonderful soup they've given me. Kotsi Aspira, makers of Viva Plus detergent powder. Thank you very much, Nala. Wow, that was a very wonderful, you know, segment. The performance was stellar. So the the person that got the answer correctly, I was surprised. I was like, maybe she has seen it somewhere before. But when she walked me through how she got the answer. I was impressed, like, wow. So folks at home, so I'm sure a lot of you guys could also get this answer, you know, just like that. But to give you a chance, that's why we have the home play. So the home play question for those at home. So tell me, what can you hold in your left hand that you can never hold in your right hand? If you know the answer to that, hit us up on our social media handle, right on your screen right now, at IBT Inspire and at Viva Plus Detergent. This is partly brought to you by Aspira, makers of Viva Plus Detergent Powder, Viva Plus Gold Detergent Powder and Viva Plus Laundry Sanitizer Detergent Powder. I still remain Abdurrahman and Idris. Masalam. What is your definition of a lead day? For me, every day comes with its own vibe. Some days, you just want to have fun with your best is. Other days, you just want to chill and finish that series. Some days are for rolling up your sleeves and beating down those market prices. While some days are for the family and those nutty nephews and nieces. Luckily, we can enjoy these days and live life to the fullest, knowing that Viva is there to keep us spotlessly clean every day. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. You're welcome to another interesting episode of the Malta Guinness Cocktail Lounge. I am Maimuna Ajitumobi, and here, of course, we will be bringing you non alcoholic drinks mixed with Malta Guinness, the official sponsor of this segment, bringing you the whole world of goodness. I have my mixologist in the house. Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome. What's your name? My name is Mark Ari. Okay, so what are we doing today? What are you giving us? Yeah, we're making Malta Cola there. Like pina colada? Yeah, yeah, Malta Guinness, yeah, Malta Guinness version of that. Great. So what are you gonna put in together for this? So I'll be making I'll be making use of uh, my coconut syrup, okay. my pineapple syrup, okay. and my Malta Guinness. Alright, let's get into this. But then expectations, what should I expect? Yeah, mm, expect something to just something to wow you. So wow me. Very interesting. Again, yeah, very okay. interesting. Let's feel. do this. Coconut syrup, 15 ml of this, which is equivalent to your two teaspoons. Teaspoons, yeah. Okay. My like coconut puri. Okay. And pineapple syrup. So and um, in place of the pineapple syrup, you can also use the extracts, your pineapple juice, just to make it more fruity and healthy. Okay, like fresh squeezed fresh pineapple. Fresh squeezed pineapple, juice. yes, fresh squeezed pineapple. Okay. Juice. So get me my Malta Guinness. All right. Here you go. 
so I'll be stirring this. As you pour it. Yeah, in. by pouring. Okay. So for everything to mix it properly. There's a whole lot going on in there already. Yes. So while I do, do you this. Want me to keep doing this for you? Yeah, I'll, I'll appreciate okay. that. So let me make use of my let me fill in my glasses with the eyes. Keep staring, keep staring, keep staring. Okay, okay thank you very All much. Right. So I'll fill in this to so my glass. And I'm done with my drink, so I'm only okay. garnishing it. So, well, why? What did you do that for? Just, just to make the mint sleeve. Oh, I can smell that. Yeah, bring out the aroma of the mint sleeve. Wow. So you literally woke it up? Yes, 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 yes. From the sleep. Just out of curiosity. Okay. Are we gonna tell this? No, we are not eating the mint leaf. The mint leaf is just for you to just just give a just the drink, give the drink a good look. <laughs> so my drink is ready. Wow, this looks gorgeous and amazing. So before I tell you what this tastes like, we are going to go on a short break. Remember, you can win amazing gifts on this segment. All you have to do is replicate this, take it to Instagram, tag at iBeautyInspire and Malta Guinness. And who knows, you might be going home with a lot of goodies. This is the Malta Guinness Cocktail Lounge. I will be right back. Welcome back to the Malta Guinness Cocktail Lounge. This is fantastic. Remember, you can recreate this at home. Tag iBeauty Inspire and Malta Guinness on Instagram. And that is how you get to go home with amazing gifts. Today on Style Fusion, I'm not going to be talking about outfits or scarves. I'm going to be talking about accessories that bring out the beauty of your abayas or any other outfit you've decided to rock. Now, Juries by Body Evans is your one-stop shop on Instagram to get your beautiful accessories, your rings, your earrings, just to give your outfits an extra pop and elegance. They're affordable, check them out on Instagram and tell me thank you after. We have come to the end of today's episode on Malta Guinness Cocktail Lounge, proudly sponsored, of course, by Malta Guinness. I will leave you, as usual, with a viral video. See you next time on iBeauty Inspire. The program still continues. I am Maimuna Ajitumobi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Everyone, share goodness with someone today. Malta Guinness, enjoy a world of good.
welcome back we hope you enjoyed the segment you just saw yeah. and uh talking about the viral videos your yes, thoughts it's really something it's it's really something it's inspiring as well as well as entertaining and after that we're going to be going for i rhyme Islamic rhythm and melodies, Sufi melodies to help you get through the busy day and, you know, inspire you all through the day. So this is where we will be leaving you for today. Of course, there's still our rhymes afterwards. Our name remains Abdurrahman Idris. And I am Omala Bakirati. Masala.